Hey, what's going on guys? Michael from Spruce and Sharp here. Hope you guys are all doing well. I know it's been a little while, but I'm back. I finally got another review for you guys. So this week we're going to look at the Shiner Gold Clay. So this is a clay that's been around for quite a while in some way, shape, or form. It is, of course, from the Shiner Gold Company. It advertises a stronghold and a matte finish and also claims to be a clay. And I am going to take a look at that in a little bit more detail as we go about the video. And as you see, the product is already in my hair, and that is something else that I am going to address as we just go about the review. And I really wasn't planning on reviewing this product right away, but I am going to be reviewing quite a bit of like matte clay type of products and a few pastes. And I felt this product would kind of be good to start with because I will probably compare at least more than one product to this one. So in the future videos, if I do start referencing it, we will at least have this up as a point of reference. But nonetheless, it comes in a gold tin with all black accents on it. As you see, it says Shiner Gold Clay. It used to be called Maximum Matte Clay, but about a year or two ago, they redid their tins, and actually the words Shiner Gold are actually stamped into the tin, which looks really nice. And then it also used to be this like light brown color, and now it's completely white and like looks really creamy inside. Almost looks like an unorthodox water-based pomade or something like that. And the scent is still the same classic Shiner Gold scent. It's that very coconut scent with like a hint of pineapple, so kind of like a pina colada. And then with this product, scooping it out is very easy. It's very creamy, which of course indicates that it will be um, a very easy product to break down and apply to the hair. But of course, I'm not going to apply it since it's already in the hair. I applied about two um, dime-sized scoops to my hair when it was towel dried, and then I just kind of let my hair dry, and this is what I got with it. And that's the one thing I don't like about this product is that like you put it in your hair, you can style with it, and for about the first five to ten minutes it stays really nice and smooth and creamy, it's very easy to move your hair around, and then it kind of just dries and it becomes like a total paste, which is not really good in the control department because how you expect it to look at first will not be how it actually looks in reality. And for those of you that are familiar with clays kind of like I don't know, Third & Co. Clay, um, the Blue Mon Clays, Arcadian Clay, um, maybe even something like O'Dowd's Matte Paste, uh, you know, just a lot of the homebrewed clays, Lockhart's Matte Clay. A lot of the homebrewed clays are really nice because they are very easy to style with. They don't get too dry, but they're also not too slick or greasy. They're usually really nicely balanced where you get that matte finish, that dry look, but they also stay pretty soft and they're easy to move around with your fingers. And then the Blue Mon ones, of course, are lab made, but they're also really high quality with a lot of um, attention to detail. This one, though, is just kind of feels like a run of the mill matte paste. It doesn't really feel like a clay because honestly, it has that like stiff stickiness that we would associate with a matte paste. Kind of has that like controlled frizz look that we would get from a paste as well. And I mean, it has a matte finish. I would definitely say it's a firm hold. It's extremely lightweight. It's very easy to get some volume out of it. But when you want to like touch it up or restyle throughout the day, kind of just like too much stickiness and it's not really convenient for restyling if you need to. So like I can run my fingers through my hair and I mean like I can get an okay look, but my fingers kind of get caught with the product in my hair and it doesn't really make it very ideal to style with because I have all these like wispy hairs on the top. But I found that if I go around with an afro pick or something like that, something that gives a little bit more control than just my fingers. I mean, it's not ideal, but it's better than using my fingers. And the, you can see you can restore volume pretty nicely. But for me too, as it kind of just like dries, cause it feels dry in the hair, it doesn't really dry out the hair, but it just feels really dry and kind of grippy in the hair. It just kind of sets my waves and it keeps them there. As you see, my hair looks really wavy despite the fact that it is a pretty nice holding product, my hair is still pretty wavy because the dryness of the product just makes my waves come out much more than something like a pomade, which moisturizes the hair for a longer period of time. So for me, it's really not that much of a clay because it's really just, it lacks a lot of the conveniences of a home brewed clay and it feels more closely to a matte paste. So really, the but the nice thing though is it is water soluble and when you rinse it out your hair really does feel nice afterwards so it has that going for it at least too i mean it's pretty user friendly it's just that the control 
kind of just violates your expectations after it's fully settled into the hair. And then, um, I mean, at least compared to like how you initially styled it. And then throughout the day, if you don't have some sort of comb or pick or other styling tool with you, it's going to be kind of inconvenient to touch it up throughout the day. So final verdict on the Shiner Gold Clay. It's an okay matte paste. It's not really a good clay, but it's a decent matte paste. If you like matte paste type of products, I'm sure this one will not really let you down in any way, but it's really just not kind of like what the pomade community or just the hair product or men's grooming community in general really expects from clays anymore. I would say this one, even though they did reformulate it, it's still surpassed by existing homebrew clays out there by a long shot. So really, I would say more of a paste, less of a clay. But it's okay, that's all right. I mean, I'm not really crazy about it, but that's just my opinion. And also too, I encourage you guys to try it out for yourselves because you guys might love it as compared to how I feel about it. But anyway, with that said, this was a review of the Shiner Gold Clay. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, don't forget to subscribe. And I will have a written review of this in the description down below. And like I said, try this product out for yourself if you want to. And if you want to do that, I will have a link to where you can get it on the Shiner Gold website. And yeah, with that said, I am actually going to go do a little bit of homework and hang out for a bit. So you guys have a good one and I will see you all soon with another video.